Savage, W, MMA fan. I'm a little tired, y'all, but uh, let me get through this. Alexa Grazo versus G Young Kim. So, this was a modestly entertaining fight. As I expected, it was mostly a standing affair. Uh, Grazo using her superior striking, boxing skills to keep Kim off of her. In the first round, Grazo started off kind of slow. I mean, she she kept kind of not using enough lateral movement, and it was allowing Kim to catch her quite a few times. And and this was what basically happened most of the first round. They were just going back and forth. I I basically call it maybe an even even round because. Just, just the ground just wasn't wasn't doing that good. She just her combinations. She just looked rusty, you know. You gotta remember she hasn't fought in a real long time because of those weight cut issues. So then we get on to the second round and Grazo really start opening up with the striking. And and Jin Yu Kim has this thing where she basically walks right into punches. And you know she has this plain facial expression. She just sits there like she's the Korean Terminator or something. She just don't barely react to anything. But after a while, taking all them damn punches in the face, you could tell that she was starting to feel it. And Grazo started having a lot of success in the second round because she started, you know, again, more lateral movement, more combinations, better jabs. And... Even when the fight would get against the cage, Graza was doing a good job at, at reversing positions, using elbows, knees, and, and just basically neutralizing Kim's game. You get in the third round, it was going back and forth again. Graza mostly catching Kim. Uh, toward the end of the fight, Something interesting happened. Grazo actually had a takedown. She tripped Kim to the ground. And you could tell she was a little exhausted. She started letting off some nice ground and pound punches toward the end of the fight. So she started slow, but she finished strong. And uh, I'm really excited for her. But I, I do have a little bit of criticism for her. And this is a criticism that me and a lot of people in the Lions Den, women's mixed arts community, has brought up time and time again. When you're speaking to one of the commentators in your post fight interview, you call somebody the fuck out. It's okay to be happy. I, I get, you know, it's okay to thank your team, it's okay to thank Dana. But call somebody out. I mean, if you weren't listening to it, the man sat there and said, Hey, considering the fact that you just got this big victory, you're probably going to have a number next to your name in the rankings. And she had a big smile on her face. It's like, is there anybody in particular you want to fight? You just moved to 125. You're possibly about to be ranked. Call out anybody, Alexa. Call out Bobo the Fool if he's on the roster. Or she. Call out She-Hawk. Call out many. Call out any damn body. And she just said, I'm ready for whatever. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. You know, I'm, I'm starting to think that maybe after she didn't make that last weight cut, maybe Dana was threatening so much to go up to 125 or something, or something. And, you know, she's just so thankful to still have a job, but, you know, just another missed opportunity. But she did get the win. We'll see where she go from here. 
This is Savage W. MMA fan. I'm out.